solve the mystery or to make some money. Uh, for Audrin, his, you know, he he's sort of like one of these characters with a mysterious past who uh, tried to escape that past by living that kind of quiet life uh, and, you know, getting sucked back into it, uh, having, you know, being what would be considered the experienced adventurer and having a, a thirst for justice. He kind of, uh, kind of fell in with this other group of people that sort of, um, sort of came to the same thing. Uh, adventurers uh, looking for a payday, uh, who find that there's more going on, uh, that, you know, hopefully discover that, you know, like many stories, that money isn't the driving force, that there is, a, you know, a wrong that has to be righted or a mystery that has to be uncovered. When did I first fall in love with role-playing games? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, long history with role-playing games. Uh, it goes all the way back to, I was probably like 10 years old, uh, visiting a cousin. Uh, he kind of got me into it. He introduced me to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Back, uh, all the way back to uh, some of those original editions from the Red Basic to uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So I've always been into uh, fantasy and science fiction. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings or, uh, you know, the Dragonlance Chronicles, things like that from, uh, from way back when. So uh, it's always been sort of up my alley. Uh, how did Vicious Mockery come to be? Uh, good question. Uh, let's see. So I was talking to Jesus, who's our producer, and I uh, noticed that he was into fantasy and uh, he had, I think, some card games or something. So I talked to him about uh, Dungeons and & Dragons, and he happened to mention that he played Dungeons & Dragons at a comic book shop, uh, and I recognized the, the name of the comic book shop because I had another friend who I knew uh, had, you know, did Dungeons & Dragons at that comic book shop. Small world, turned out they knew each other. So I was like, hey, let's get together and put together, a, try putting together a Dungeons & Dragons show that we can, you know, see if we can film a campaign. How is Vicious Mockery unique? Well, there's nothing else quite like it. Uh, I think we, maybe because we do everything wrong, uh, might be which makes it different from all the other D&D podcasts out there. Uh, you know, it's, we just kind of decided to take something that, you know, is usually done with just friends, uh, on your own time, something that, you know, your kind of mainstream audience doesn't necessarily know a lot about, and see if we can kind of make something entertaining out of it, kind of bring it, uh, bring it out for people to, to kind of get an idea about, uh, and see if we can kind of bring some of the fun that people have playing in their garage or at a comic book shop or uh, with their friends, uh, you know, in their dorm room, and see if we can kind of kind of capture the fun and, uh, and adventure uh, that people kind of develop in those situations. For uh, Dungeons & Dragons, it's really all about uh, improvisation. It's a, a loose set of rules for a fantasy world or any world, basically, uh, that people can use to kind of create more organized stories. Uh, that way, you know, you can kind of keep a story arc going. You can have believable uh, characters and situations. Uh, that way people can sort of create these stories and have a sort of grounded uh, basis for where they go with them. Uh, and that way, and then everyone kind of brings their personality and uh, you never know what, what kind of situation you're going to get into. Uh, you never know, based on dice rolls, uh, how your luck is going to change. So improvising is sort of like it's a group storytelling. It's like a choose your own adventure uh, where everyone has a sort of interactive role in it. Uh, and it's important because uh, that's how you make a good story is uh, you make good characters and you uh, put them in a, you know, situations then see if, you know, what they do to kind of get out of it. And, you know, a bunch of people improvising sort of brings a, uh, a, a life uh, to the storytelling that, say, one person in their head writing a novel, uh, you know, uh, 
it changes it up when you have like a multiple you know brains kind of working against each other. It's it's a, not it's a game. It's a challenge. It's a story. It's you know uh, a role playing exercise. It's acting. It's all of those things that kind of can be rolled into one. My character. My character is Audrin Greensmoke. Uh, he is considered the bad boy of the Dungeons and Dragons community, but you already knew that. Uh, he is a how would you say a cynical quasi-ex-paladin, uh, sort of fighter character. He's considered the John McClane of our fantasy world, a reluctant uh, detective, in a sense. He started out as, uh, you know, in his local militia uh, after some events that uh, occurred, uh, sent him on an unusual path uh, that I'd can't give too much away because we'll have to see how that develops and we don't really know how it's going to develop but uh, he is you know you're sort of I try to kind of bring in a sort of everyman character that you would see in you know uh, all kinds of fiction and uh, as he's kind of got an obsession with justice and uh, that uh, sort of gives him you know that's kind of his agenda is uh, is is seeking justice. You know, I like to I like to play with the you know I like to incorporate you know your standard fantasy tropes into uh, into the into a fantasy world and uh, you know all the ones that I've kind of grown up with, all the ones that I've uh, enjoyed and the characters and uh, that I've seen in movies and books and stuff like that, and try to bring that kind of uh, character and then sort of see where the situation kind of brings him. So uh, he's, he's not necessarily agenda-driven uh, as much as he's kind of got his own set of uh, rules, personal rules, and following those rules sort of takes him on adventure. Pants. I've been told repeatedly that I have to wear pants, even though we don't even see him on camera, uh, but repeatedly, over and over, like a broken record, we have to wear pants. Uh, what else? Let's see, we all have our own uh, colors. Uh, Audrin's color is red, so I try to have some sort of uh, splash of red in, uh, into my uh, costume. Uh, whatever we're wearing that day. Uh, that way, you know, we, the, the little things that we kind of bring to the table literally uh, sometimes gets translated into the characters in the fantasy world. And hopefully, if someone watches, uh, they get that, those, the likeness in their imagination of the different characters, and that, uh, so that gives them something to, to base their, their, their story on. And it's, it's one long, ongoing adventure. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to distinguish where one adventure begins and the other adventure, or one, one ends and the other uh, adventure begins. We've just kind of been doing a very long form, uh, so far about 50 hours long form adventure. Uh, you know what, in 50 hours a, lot's can, a lot can happen, a lot can happen. So uh, it's, it might be up to each person to, to determine uh, for themselves where, where, what directions they really like the, the show going. Role playing games have been uh, very influential and very influenced by all kinds of other media, whether it's, uh, you know, a role playing game is a tabletop game, uh, much like any kind of board game would be a role playing or would be a, a tabletop game or a video game. And uh, you'll notice that in all those kinds of uh, uh, mediums, that, you know, characters are usually distinguishable, uh, usually by a color, sometimes it's by a, a shoe. Uh, but, you know, for role-playing games, uh, it, that way, kind of, you know, you want to give as much as you can to the viewer to kind of take in, take with them into uh, in, to their imagination. Uh, you don't want to give them everything, but you want to give them things that you know, help them dis distinguish characters. And uh, so, you know, bringing in that, that we each kind of have a different color to represent us, not only kind of harkens back to board games and video games uh, where you pick your color uh, and, and jump onto the board, but it also uh, is something that, you know, represents the fact that all of our characters uh, come from uh, very diverse backgrounds, and so those diverse backgrounds uh, usually come with its own symbols or uh, colors and flags and things like that. So uh, instead of 
getting too deep with everybody having their own like coat of arms that have to, has to be designed, uh, we started kind of simple and just having us kind of like represented by colors. And then when people visit the lands that they that these characters come from, or when people uh, uh, are are listening, you know what they they can they can use these kinds of you know little memory uh, enhancements to kind of add to the characters. So uh, the other f three, four, four actors, uh, four performers, or four players, and our DM. Uh, you know, we kind of came together sort of through a shared interest in, in sensibilities, and in, in whether it's gaming and fantasy, uh, or just being silly. Uh, and so uh, I've played with Mark before, uh, and I've worked with Jesus before, and I've uh, played with um, Paula and Jose, and I've known uh, Jordan for a while, so we all just kind of, you know, you find people in the same places and uh, or in places of interest. Uh, you find those people with shared interests, and you kind of bring them together. And it's sort of like a gravitational thing, I think. If uh, someone wasn't, you know, the best time you have is when everyone's having a good time. If everyone's having fun, then it makes the show better. And uh, if someone wasn't having fun, they wouldn't be a part of the show. So uh, it makes a, a lot of sense that you know people who kind of share that same kind of sense of uh, fun and adventure kind of gravitate towards each other. And uh, you know, uh, we kind of use the show as you know not only an excuse to be able to get together and play uh, play games with our friends, but uh, you know as a excuse to sort of, you know, learn new things and kind of create together. Uh, I think we're all just kind of a creative bunch of people. Why does Audrin uh, trust the other characters? How do they get along? Again, much like in real life and how the show kind of came together, that's how a group of adventurers come together, as they find themselves uh, and under unusual circumstances. Uh, they all kind of have the same kind of agenda, uh, which is to whether it's to solve the mystery or to make some money. Uh, for Audrin, his, you know, he he's sort of like one of these characters with a mysterious past who uh, tried to escape that past by living that kind of quiet life uh, and, you know, getting sucked back into it, uh, having, you know, being what would be considered the experienced adventurer and having a, a thirst for justice. He kind of uh, kind of fell in with this other group of people that sort of um, sort of came to the same thing. Uh, adventurers uh, looking for a payday uh, who find that there's more going on uh, that, you know, hopefully discover that, you know, like many stories, that money isn't the driving force, that there is a... Uh, you know, a wrong that has to be righted or a mystery that has to be uncovered. And so it's the sense of, uh, of justice, uh, of an inquisitorial nature, uh, and, you know, just kind of trying to get out there and bust some heads, uh, you know, comes together. And again, much like a, a group of people will come together at a Dungeons & Dragons table uh, in, in a fantasy medieval world. That's how, instead of coming together on a tabletop, they would come together as an adventuring group to, uh, you know, go and, 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 uh, and, and undertake quests. So much, but you'll have to watch the show to find out. How about that? You always leave them wanting more. Uh, so many mysteries to uncover. So many jokes to find punchlines for. Uh, if you have a sense of adventure, if you have a sense of humor, you're cool with us. So, uh, yeah, check it out, genuinely or ironically, and uh, hopefully you have as much fun watching it as we do making it.